This conference will now be recorded. All right, folks, so I just want to uh, thank you for coming this afternoon. Uh, today is Thursday uh, the 12th, and we are going to be here for our lab session. And first off, I'd like to just start off with having you actually see this in the video that we're going over as far as this is the assignment, and this is what's going to be due, and next, the quiz for this week, and the, the lab quiz that will be available next week that you're going to actually take uh, during your lab time. Uh, next uh, Thursday at two o'clock. Okay, so we'll uh, do that. Today we are going to be reviewing uh, some PowerPoint as well as a handout regarding respiratory illnesses, and then we're going to be looking at respiratory anatomy, and then we'll be uh, done for the day. So uh, please, you know, let me know if you have any questions. So I'm going to uh, minimize this document. I'm going to then look at the PowerPoint first. So we're going to just, there's only a few slides that we need to go over, but I want to go over these respiratory disorders. So you'll see here respiratory system disorders, tobacco, irritants, and apnea. And so let's look here as far as with uh, smoking first and cigarettes and such. And and I would tell you that also as new as uh, vaping is and such, folks, we, you know, it's also going to, uh, the research is not fully in as far as how uh, safe vaping is, um, you, you have to believe that it's not as safe as they would like you to believe. And so I would absolutely think twice before I uh, choose that as a uh, as a form of, uh, you know, smoking and such. So you'll see here so as, as far as electronic cigarettes, right? But um, But really, you know, vaping and such, and I don't know if that's considered the same. I don't think it's the same thing. I think there are a little bit of different types of uh, uh, options here for this, but anyhow, I don't think it's a good idea, right? And I mean, we all can kind of guess that it's probably not a, a wise idea uh, to to choose this. But and I and I, I would tell you that I know that nicotine is highly addictive, right? You see, they are more addictive than heroin. So I, I don't. There's no judging, folks. There's no judging here whatsoever. Um, really, in, in working with my patients all these years, there's no judging because none of us are perfect. And we all have our issues and, and we use things in order to help us get through and um, difficult and stressful situations. And so I, I understand, I do. But it, and I understand it's tough because uh, how difficult it is to break this habit of uh, smoking and uh, this addiction to nicotine. So I would tell you this, that multi-factorial multi, uh, type of a, uh, of a, of a a way of trying to stop smoking as far as smoking cessation. It's a matter of joining a group, being a part of a support group, having using different types of devices or or, uh, or patches or whatever it may be or that you can do in order to help you stop. Um, really, it's if you only just do one uh, type of uh, treatment in order to stop smoking, it usually isn't as effective as if you incorporate, a, um, even people have done uh, uh, hypnosis. I mean, whatever it is that you choose to try and work at trying to stop smoking, um, the more things that you incorporate into that and the more support that you have, the better off you'll be as far as uh, having the better your chances are of stop, stopping uh, smoking. Bronchitis, um, we see here as far as the irritants that are in the air, the atmosphere that we breathe, uh, there are many uh, pollutants present. And as a result, so bacterial or chemical agents destroy tissue in the bronchial walls. Uh, chronic bronchitis is, is a tough, tough thing to deal with. I posted this. This is within your, uh, your PowerPoint. I'm not going to read all of this, folks. You can do that. But you can see here as far as the effects of smoking, the benefits of quitting. Um, please check this out. Read through this here and just see how uh, really smoking cigarettes uh, does not just affect just one body system, but you'll see here that many body systems are affected and the chances of getting cancer, uh, coming down with cancer as a result of um, smoking, it's much higher as a result. Look at this here, folks. Cancer of the bladder, seven to 10 times greater risk for those who smoke. That's terrible, right? And again, too, there's no judging here, you know? I, I understand, I know it's tough, it's tough. Um, so, you know, you have to do all that you can do. Um, it has to come, really, it has to come first intrinsically from inside of you that you want to stop. I, I get that. So, you know, I, I just hope you get, if those of you that do smoke, that you get the help you need, truly. 
So emphysema, um, emphysema, chronic bronchitis, these are uh, types of disorders and diseases that actually comprise what's called this chronic obstructive pulmonary disease disorder, um, COPD, okay? This will lead to a permanent damaging of the lungs, and uh, this is really uh, terrible as far as uh, how it affects a person's quality of life. Truly, it's horrible. Yeah, it's, it's just bad. We've, we've had, my wife and I both have had um, relatives that have suffered as a result of being addicted to smoking uh, for many years, and the, uh, the toll that it takes upon the body and the illnesses that you uh, end up suffering as a result, it's just tragic. It's really terrible. Asthma. Asthma is another one as far as respiratory diseases where uh, many people suffer. In my own family, we have a couple of my children that have asthma. And I, I know it's, a, it's really a difficult uh, disorder to manage and to deal with. It can be managed. It can be uh, managed effectively. Uh, but it's still, it's, it's a scary thing when someone is going through an asthmatic attack. And if you've never seen that before, um, it is pretty scary because it's an issue where they're having difficulty breathing. Um, imagine, you know, so have you ever played in a, a, a swimming pool or in the ocean or in a lake or in a stream and you've been underwater and, and someone's maybe like, you know, you're, you're wrestling around and you're, someone maybe holds you underwater for a short period of time, but just, just sit fooling around and, uh, but you couldn't breathe. How horrible is that sensation? So just imagine if this is a sensation on land outside of the water and you're having difficulty breathing, how troublesome and scary that can be. The term uh, apnea, right? So this apnea is, is in particular, we hear, we've heard this term a lot as a result of uh, people that are um, uh, trying to sell uh, uh, different goods and different types of uh, treatments and such. And so they'll, they'll reach out and they'll have commercials on the internet and also on the radio and on TV regarding sleep apnea. So apnea is interrupted breathing and in particular sleep apnea during when uh, a patient is sleeping and uh, my wife and I both uh, suffer with this and it's uh, it's not an easy thing to deal with for sure and and it's uh, pretty troublesome and it can affect many body systems as a result um, you'll see here the mechanisms for sensing changes in gas levels uh, become less effective with age and so really uh, the oxygenation of the tissues of the cells and the tissues of the body the brain in particular folks it needs its oxygen and uh, really reduce that amount of oxygen that's being sent to the brain that's a problem okay you'll see here also that uh, fat deposits in the neck can obstruct airways so um, this is this is obesity is definitely um, uh, a, a major factor in uh, sleep apnea and and you'll you'll there are different devices and uh, uh, types of uh, treatment that can be done as far as surgical treatment as far as correcting uh, certain excess tissue within the throat and in the oral cavity, as well as devices that you can be hooked up to that can help uh, the patient uh, put uh, positive airflow into the uh, into them into the respiratory system as they're sleeping in order to prevent uh, sleep apnea. Okay. Pneumonia. Uh, pneumonia is a uh, fluid buildup within the lungs as a result of some type of infection. Uh, this really is. Uh, uh, can be a challenge and it can have multiple etiologies, meaning multiple causes can lead to pneumonia, all right? Uh, can be triggered by the flu, can be triggered by a bacteria, uh, there can be fungal, there can be many type of uh, causes for pneumonia, uh, but this needs to be treated because understand that, you know, in the, in the digestive system, we have an opening and we have an exit. So we have an entrance into the digestive system, we have an exit for the digestive system uh, via the rectum and the anus, right? The respiratory system, it's a closed system, right? We, if we go in as far as gases and gases can come out, fine. But how about uh, liquids and such? No, that's a problem, right? So when we have fluid buildup, it's very challenging and difficult in order to uh, take care of that in uh, the lungs. And this will affect then the ability for the lungs to uh, have gas exchange occurring. And this could affect then oxygenation of the red blood cells, which would lead to then issues with oxygenation of the tissues. So that's a problem. We have here as far as flu viruses, as far as uh, SARS is concerned, as far, so um, 
the COVID situation right now, right? So we, we realize that there are multiple bacteria and viral uh, causes for um, issues with the respiratory system and how scary it can be. And we see in this environment that we're living in right now, how scary it can be that uh, as a result of transmission by just breathing and, and coughing, um, can can send out this particulate matter that can contain these little time bombs that can be transferred from one person to another and can make someone sick. And so this is a scary environment that we're living in. We've already been dealing with flus for many, many years. Um, and, and how about also uh, uh, thinking of tuberculosis, another one that was a major respiratory issue where if you ended up coming down with tuberculosis by, prior to antibiotic treatment, it meant it was a death sentence. Now, it didn't mean that it was an immediate death sentence, but there are, so in, New, in the state of New Jersey, there were many, um, uh, what was the, the term that I'm, I'm trying to use? Uh, it'll come to me, but it was like areas like a nursing home, but more of like a, a retreat center where you could go, where it, uh, you could be in the mountain areas or in different areas where you would uh, can can enjoy some of nature and such, but there was no true cure for tuberculosis, and so you went there to die, right? And understood also that it was very, um, it could, people, um, the transmission of tuberculosis was not difficult because it could be transmitted as far as via uh, coughing and getting transmitted, uh, droplet transmission from one person to the next, and uh, so, you know, this was something that we had to sequester patients in these homes in order to then prevent them from making many other people sick. So tuberculosis was a big deal prior to prior to uh, antibiotic uh, treatment and such. So here we have tuberculosis as far as a bacterium, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Um, again, uh, really difficult uh, infection to to treat, but it can. But now we can treat it. Lung cancers, right? And we know that as a result of uh, smoking, as a result of, how about also, um, and, and think of oral cancers also as a result of chewing tobacco and such. And, uh, you know, you, I've heard said that uh, with those that chew tobacco and, and have it within their, their lip and such, that that gives you more of a rush with the nicotine than does even smoking. And so um, it can be quite, virulent as far as da the damage that can occur to the oral cavity if you come down with some type of oral cancer as a result of um, using uh, tobacco and such. And, and know that lung cancer, very aggressive. And again, too, I've told you that uh, we've had family members die as a result. It's horrible, truly horrible. Here, as far as seeing the respiratory system in homeostasis, realizing that the delivery of oxygen and the removal of CO2 from the cells of the body and having it exit or enter oxygen, exit CO2, it's vital for the function of the human body, right? So really uh, crucial in order for the body to survive. Body mechanisms adjust respiration as needed uh, to keep the body in homeostasis, to keep a stable environment of the body no matter what goes on outside of the body. Very good. So that's just one of our few slides there, remainder of the PowerPoint. I want to also review, let's see here. Here we go. I'm going to, I believe I posted this and uh, I will confirm that there, but this just gives you, uh, and I'm not going to go over it, folks. I'm just going to show it to you there and you can review it on your own and see if this, you would choose to pick one of these uh, types of illnesses, uh, disorders, diseases, of the respiratory system to do your mini paper on. And the mini paper just has to be one page, right? As we have been doing. The last, the last uh, week there was a little bit different, but this week, one page of, of uh, research for your mini paper regarding the respiratory system, okay? So you'll see here, I've given you some good information regarding uh, rhinitis, laryngitis, issues regarding smoking. I've provided this image, which is quite a stark image regarding um, looking at lungs from a cadaver who uh, uh, smoked and one who did not, you know, pretty stark, right? I think we've seen that before. This is the Heimlich maneuver um, regarding uh, patients' issues as far as with uh, um, choking as a result of some type of 
whatever it may be lodged within the uh, the uh, esophagus and such and the uh, in the in the pharynx. Uh, so we really want to make sure that we uh, know how to do this, the Heimlich maneuver. Um, very important. So tracheal obstruction and such, and Heimlich maneuver, and then going over a little bit regarding bronchitis and emphysema, giving you some good images here to have an idea. And really, with chronic bronchitis, this is really excellent images here to show you that with bronchitis. So you see here that there's inflammation, so that the lumen, the area where air would pass through, is much smaller in the patient with chronic bronchitis. There's increased mucus production and muscle constriction. So really, it's it's a narrow tube filled with liquids that are you're trying to get gases uh, through, and so it makes life a whole lot difficult for patients with bronchitis. And with emphysema, you'll see here that the walls of these little alveoli, see how these alveoli have all these separations between them? They're like little grapes. Here, we have a destruction of those walls, so we have larger spaces and less um, ability to have gas exchange occur. And this is really a bad thing. And, and know that also with patients with emphysema, their lungs are kind of overinflated. They have a difficulty uh, having the air leave the lungs. And so this is really labored breathing, chronic dyspnea, difficulty breathing. And here I give you a little bit regarding lung cancer and SIDS and asthma. And here also, like with uh, very similar to with the chronic bronchitis here with asthma, you can see how, so inflamed bronchial tube of an asthmatic, you see that the tube, the area where we have gas exchange, gas, gas movement, gas exchange occurs here, but gas movement, look at the lumen here, healthy, no problem. Here, filled with, filled with mucus and swelling and tightening of the musculature, um, tough stuff, asthma. All right, very good, so let's minimize that. And I'd like to now show you some images regarding, let's, yeah, let's go here first. So here we have, I would like to share with you an image regarding the sinuses, okay? So the sinuses are areas, or they are spaces within the skull, okay, that allow for um, air to be present and allow for the skull not to be fully solid, right? Uh, bone, but have spaces of, of, of that, that where we can end up having, unfortunately, um, <laughs> infections can occur. But really, they should be air-filled spaces, and they contribute to the ability to keep the, the skull lighter and also uh, help to, um, with our, our voice, with our um, sound production, voice production, phonation, P H O N. A-T-I-O-N, phonation, the ability to speak, it leads to, to a, a certain tone and resonance in our speech. We know this to also because when you, again, I've mentioned this to you, I think in class there, that if these areas of sinuses are filled with fluid in any of them as a result of an infection, um, it can really affect the, the ability for how we speak, right, and how it sounds, right? So, uh, so those are the different sinuses. In particular, uh, when uh, for the uh, practical, the not practical, but the lab quiz for this part of the lab quiz number three. Let's see here. Here we go. So I'll have you, you'll have to know, you'll have to know the sinuses, the frontal and the sphenoid. So in particular, here's the frontal bone. So these are the frontal sinuses in green and the sphenoid sinus right here in pink and purple, I guess. And here you see purple. So these, the green and the purple, are what you'll have to identify on a lateral view. So this would be the lateral view. And so you're seeing the frontal sinus here and the sphenoid sinus here, okay? And what's interesting is that you'll see this little, see this little horseshoe area here? It's kind of hard to see, but this is really where your uh, pituitary gland is located. And that's really very important for um, working with the endocrine system as far as uh, production of different endocrine hormones that lead to uh, different hormones like thyroid hormone, in particular, being released throughout the whole body. So very crucial and important area. But you're just seeing how there's that sphenoid sinus right below where the pituitary gland would be. 
but you're seeing how we have here maxillary sinuses deep within we have more of these ethmoid sinuses okay. and this is why your clinician might palpate or push put some pressure in areas to see if you're any discomfort uh, that could be as a result of some type of infection so when they do an examination and they're looking in your nasal cavity to see what's going on or your your mouth your oral cavity your throat your pharynx um, and they're doing this pressure they're just trying to see hey what's going on uh, from a uh, basic exam point of view as far as how how you're doing and do you po possibly have some type of uh, infection so let's go here to this is an image of the pharynx okay the pharynx is your throat now your throat your pharynx right here so you have naso oro and laryngeo okay and this is the larynx this is your voice box right here so this is a common pathway folks common pathway for uh, gases as well as food and liquid now what's going to prevent the food and liquid from entering into the trachea and into the respiratory system would be again this epiglottis right here which will might be as a flap it will close and it will close over the respiratory system so that only the gas and liquid will then pass into the esophagus and into the gastrointestinal tract gi tract okay you'll see here also i'm going to look at the list that i have for you all the hard palate is right here so the roof of your mouth the roof of your mouth is the hard palate. Okay, you see that right here. And the uvula is this piece of tissue right here. This piece of tissue right here. So when you open up the oral cavity, here's your tongue. So this is the oral cavity. And you open up your mouth, right? And the doctor would look in, a clinician would look in, and you would go, you know, they put a tongue depressor on your tongue, and they'd ask you to say, ah. All uh, right, and the uvula, uh, that little little piece of tissue in the back, that's what they're looking at and throughout the whole area there to see uh, what's going on with your uh, tonsils and what's going on with the whole oral cavity there. Is there inflammation present? Is it red? Are there little nodules? Is it little white little specks in through in there? Uh, giving us a sign that there quite possibly could be some type of infection going on, okay? so the pharynx again so the na so this is the nasal cavity so this would be the nasopharynx this is the oropharynx and this is the laryngeopharynx so just three areas of your throat okay the larynx again is this uh structure right in through in here that contains the vocal cords aka also known as the vocal folds we have the trachea and we have the esophagus here i already mentioned to you regarding the epiglottis that structure right there Let's look at another image. And oh, and by the way, just to show you here too, what's pretty neat is that uh, let me just make it bigger. Here would be right. So this area right here is an opening, right? So we we all know that, right? This this area in your nasal cavity is considered the vestibule, okay? And these are the uh, external and internal nares where we have an opening where air can enter in, right, through this nasal cavity. Here we have the frontal sinus. Here we have the sphenoid sinus present right there. And you'll see that we have these folds within the tissue. And it's on both sides, bilateral, on both sides with present within uh, the nasal cavity. And there's a lot of mucus here. And so this helps to uh, slow down air as it passes up into our nasal cavity. And it helps to warm it and uh, give it some moisture, okay, before it actually enters into the respiratory system. You see the blue here, this represents the cartilage rings of the trachea. And now let me go to another image to just show you regarding uh, the lungs and such. Let's see here. Here we go. Yeah, so first I'd like to show you is that, um, so here we're seeing the rib cage and we're seeing the sternum and we're seeing musculature here, right? This musculature between the ribs are called intercostal muscles, intercostal muscles, okay? So those are types of muscles that uh, when you're eating ribs out, when you go out to a, like a barbecue place and you eat ribs, these are the rib, These that's the musculature that you, that's been cooked and that you're eating, whether it's uh, pork or beef. Um, but know that these intercostal muscles are very important uh, for your ability to breathe. 
okay? In particular, the external intercostal muscles contract as well as the diaphragm. So you're seeing that diaphragm muscle right here. Here's a part of it right here. And that will allow for you to have the ability uh, to breathe because what will happen is that the diaphragm contracts, flattens, and then it increases, right? We talked about this before. It increases the thoracic cavity, the, the volume of the lungs, and then air will do what? If the volume increases, pressure decreases in the lungs, and air will go from high pressure in the atmosphere to low pressure in your lungs, and that's inhalation. So those are the intercostal muscles, the diaphragm, okay? And here you're seeing uh, a nice image. Here you're seeing a nice image regarding, uh, here would be the sagittal head, the, the side view of the head. And what you're looking at is, what, what I wanna focus on this image would be the trachea. Then it bifurcates, it goes into two tubes, the bronchi, the primary bronchi. Secondary bronchi go to uh, the actual uh, different lobes of the lung. So there are two lobes, two lobes for the left side, left lung, and three lobes for the right lung. So we have one, two, and three lobes for the right side, and one and two lobes for the left side. And so you'll have these secondary bronchi, branches of the primary, right, go to each lobe. And then within each lobe, we have sections within each lobe. And so the tertiary, or the the, the third third levels of the bronchi, the tertiary bronchi, will go to each of those sections within uh, the bronchi themselves, within the uh, within the lungs themselves, in those lobes. Okay, and if you were to actually, and they call this the bronchial tree. So if you were to take this and turn it upside down, you would see how the tree trunk would represent the trachea, and then the branches would be the bronchi and the different primary, secondary, and tertiary bronchi. And then bronchioles are these even tinier structures. Bronchioles are these tinier structures that will eventually lead to uh, the alveoli, the area where gas exchange occurs, right? So we have air in here, we have gases within here, covered by these uh, capillaries. And so we'll have an oxygenation of the uh, blood, and the blood will then go to uh, the systemic circulation and send oxygen to the cells of the tissues of the body. Okay. And that's, that'll do it there, very good. Okay, so um, that's it as far as the respiratory system anatomy. I'm going to, after, right when I'm done here, so let's close this out.